Hi, everybody. So uh, now we're going to backtrack in the book about back to chapter three, which is about counting. And the reason I uh, decided to do things in this order is that um, a lot of the counting results really do rely on induction. Um, and they provide a lot of interesting examples of inductive proofs. So I thought it would be better to look at induction before we looked at some of these counting results. Uh, the book, uh, because it's in chapter three, doesn't necessarily mention induction. So I'm going to try to do some examples and illustrate how what's really going on is um, a kind of in, is usually induction. OK, so let's start with um, what's called the multiplication principle. And we'll begin with the definition. Um, so a list, or a finite list anyway, is an element of the Cartesian product of a collection of sets, x1 up through xn. And um, a common counting problem is to determine the number of lists that you can construct with certain properties uh, where the entries are drawn from a Cartesian product like x. So why do I think of a list as an element of a Cartesian product? Well, a list, maybe colloquially, colloquially, is a collection of objects in a particular order, like um, me, you, Fred, Jan, and so on, up to uh, Millie. And uh, a list like this, what's important is that the order matters and that each entry is chosen from some particular set. So for example, here, each entry might be chosen from the set of people or from the set of names. And so we can think of this as an ordered tuple or as an element of a Cartesian product of the sets that we're interested in. And uh, the multiplication principle, which is stated as a fact back way back in chapter three, says that if you're making a list of length n and you have a1 possible choices for the first entry, and A2 possible choices for the second entry, and A3 possible choices for the third entry, and so on, then the total number of lists that you can construct is the product of those numbers. And one way to um, make this more formal is by a fact which um, we kind of talked about already long ago when we were talking about Cartesian products, which is that suppose you have a collection of sets X, which are finite, uh, x1 up to xn, and you look at the number of elements in their Cartesian product, then the number of elements in their Cartesian product is the product of the number of elements in each set. So um, just as a very simple example, if x1 is the set AB and x2 is the set 1, 2, then x1 cross x2 is the collection of ordered pairs a1, a2, b1, and b2. In other words, it's the collection of lists of length 2, where the first element is chosen from x1, the second element is chosen from x2, and the number of elements in x1 cross x2 is 4. Um, this to actually prove this proposition really is a matter of induction. Um, and let me just outline why it's an inductive proof. So rather than thinking about this as a fact, let's try to prove it by induction. So the base case or the simplest case here is the case where we have just two sets. And then the, we need to show in that case, that the number of elements in x1 cross x2 is the number of elements in x1 times the number of elements in x2. And there are a variety of ways to do that. Um, maybe the, the most intuitive is to draw a picture. We don't normally maybe like to have pictures, but we could think of writing down the elements of the set x1 and writing down this elements of, of the set x2 and making a box. So here n is the number of elements in x1 
m is the number of elements in x2, and you see I've numbered them. I've just written down, them down in some order. And so then the ordered pairs are the number of points inside this grid where you make a list by first choosing a coordinate from the first column and then picking a, uh, from the first row and then picking a column for the second element. And this grid, this box, has n times m total possibilities. So this shows that if you have two sets, that the number of elements is n times m, where n is the number of elements in the first set, m is the number of elements in the second. For the inductive step, let's look at the case where we have n plus 1 sets. And let's think, so that what does that mean? The set That's the collection of elements a1, a2, all the way out to an plus 1, where ai is an element of xi, for i equals 1 up to n plus 1. The nth element of the ordered pair comes from the nth set. And we want to count these. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to reduce it to the case where we just have two sets. We're going to think of this as a list of length n with one more term added at the end. So we're going to look at our sequence a1 up to a n, a n plus 1, as first the list a1 up to a n, and then a n plus 1 at the end. And from this we see that the number of elements in the big product out to x n plus 1 is the same as the number of elements in the first n together with the last one. And now we can use our inductive hypothesis, because our inductive hypothesis says that the number of elements in x1 up to xn crossed is a1 up to a n. And the two case says that the number of elements in x1 cross cross xn cross xn plus 1 is the number of elements in the first set times the number of elements in the second set, which is a1 times up to an times an plus 1. And that's what we were trying to prove. So the inductive trick here is to look at a product of n plus 1 things as a product of n things times a product of one thing. The inductive step allows us to work out what the product of the first n things is. And then the case where n equals 2 allows us to do the case where we have two terms. And so this gives us an inductive proof of the uh, multiplication principle. Maybe the one little technical point that we did here is we, we said, look, we're going to count the number of lists of length n plus 1 by looking at a list of length n plus 1 as a list of length n with one more term added. And so even though we added these extra parentheses here, that didn't change the total number of things that we were trying to count. Okay. Let's do another example here, a very concrete example. So suppose you want to count the number of ways you can order a coffee with the choices of whole skim or soy milk, small, medium, or large size, and one or two shots of express espresso. So here you have, if you want to put it into the context of Cartesian products, you have three sets. The first set, X1, consists of the types of milk, whole, skim, or soy. The second set consists of the sizes, 
small, medium, or large. And the third set consists of the number of shots of espresso, one shot or two shots. And so a type of coffee corresponds to an element of x1 cross x2 cross x3. For example, whole, small, one shot. And by the multiplication principle, the number of elements in this Cartesian product is 3 times 3 times 2, which is 18. Now we're going to look at a somewhat longer example, but I think I will take that up in a separate video.